Hi everybody, I'm Zach and I like movies, and I'm here to bring you another entry in my Letterboxd Criterion Challenge for 2024. Today's prompt was number 29, which was to pick from Yola Tango's Closet Picks, and I went with Monterey Pop. This was a 1968 uh, concert film documentary from director P. D. A. Pettibaker, and it's about that beautiful June weekend in, in 1967 that began the summer of love and really, really just captured the spirit of the 1960s in the Monterey International Pop Festival, which uh, really just has like a who's who of, of some of the biggest names in rock and roll music at the time. Even the who! Like, ser seriously, you have, like, just listen to some of these names that performed here. Scott McKenzie, The Mamas and the Papas, Can Heat, Simon and Garfunkel, Jefferson Airplane, Janis Joplin, oh, <laughs> yeah, the, again, The Who, Eric Burden and the Animals, like, literally, like, even small, even the in-betweener names outside of the big ones, they still, like, really have, like, if you think, like, when you think of 60s music and 60s rock and roll, this, this doc, this concert has that, and it was all wonderfully captured from, from our, one of the greatest documentary directors of all time, one Don Allen Pennebaker, who really became a pioneer of a style of documentary out of the early 60s that became known as direct cinema. And, and it really sprang about from like new technology in uh, lightweight handheld camera, uh, camera equipment and more synchronous sound equipment. And so that and that really revolutionized uh, what filmmakers could do. Now, instead of just lugging around truckloads of crew and equipment and and hulking and carrying around these like tripod mounted hulking beasts that cameras were around were in the late in the in the fifties, they were able to like use able to like use carry on these more handheld cameras. They could just like capture as much as possible without like the need for all of this and. Pen and Pennebaker's style was interesting because he doesn't, he did not use interviews. He did, he like completely shooed voiceover narration or anything. And uh, especially when it came to his docs. And he, he preferred just like coming to and capturing a moment and filming it as honestly as possible. Like trying to film what they saw uh, at, when they saw it and letting the audience decide on how they how they felt about it, and a lot of this, a lot of the time, it could be lead to a lot of uh, creative and uh, very emotionally uh, engaging uh, pieces of documentary of just like seeing something, seeing a moment captured, I'm sure, and you know just letting just letting you know, again just letting you feel feel about it, and so and oftentimes it and oftentimes it led to a lot of uh, great works and works like uh, his. A uh, very famous Bob Dylan documentary, "Don't Look Back," or his 1993 documentary about the uh, Clinton, the Bill Clinton election campaign, "The War Room," which uh, I think won an Oscar for best doc. Uh, it was definitely nominated. That was one of his more famous works. But here, it's here he's doing so. He's really going overboard and doing so much to capture this moment and really capture the mood of the mood of the festival, but what's kind of what what is kind of crushing about this movie, and probably my biggest criticism about, it, is that it's too short. This is this movie is only eighty minutes long, and given the talent that it films, even even the snippets of what we see uh, in those eighty minutes, it's criminal. Some of these performances are absolutely incredible. Like just just wow, and like and, like, and he had like a big crew working here. He had like a crew of like about ten cameramen filming. These performances and they and they all each and all of them get credited you know get like their special credit in the in the closing credits of this movie and one of these cameramen I have to add, have to add was Albert Mazels who was one half of the Mazels brothers Now the Mazels brothers were also a pair of of, of, of documentarians who had very famous very influential documentary docs uh, and like not, not just like great docs some of the greatest documentaries ever made were by the Mazels like uh, like salesmen, or their eternally lovable uh, uh, Grey Gardens, but more importantly to Monterey Pop, they they were the directors of Gimme Shelter, and that was the very grim and upsetting uh, 
documentary on the Rolling Stones concert that went real bad. bad. And I would kind of say that Monterey Pop is kind of the exact opposite. <laughs> it's sort of the mirror image of Gimme Shelter Alter, in basically every way, I would say. say like, it's like, it's like the optimistic, good timeline version of Gimme Shelter. Like, you know, the music, like, we see the music being played in as full as possible. The vibes are just so fun and welcoming and incredible, incredible. Everybody is high and having the time of their lives. They're all, they're all, they're all on the good trip. And, uh, you know, nobody gets stabbed. It's wonderful. You can't, you couldn't have probably have asked for a better music festival. I th and I think if I think if you watch something like uh, Quest Love's Summer of Love, uh, you probably would find a lot of similarities to that here. Here, especially especially in like just the joy and beauty and fun of these performances. And again, just kind of getting the great vibe of the moment. Moment. And yeah, so many of these performances are like sometimes they're just like soothing and calm. Like any t like you know, kicks off pretty pretty quick. Uh, with the mamas and the papas, you know, they play California Dreaming, which is just a permanent mood. It's just such a great vibe. vibe. But then you, get, and then even you get like uh, this great jazz performance, this psychedelic jazz performance by uh, uh, Hugh Masekala, uh, who play you know, they, and uh, he and his band play uh, Bajabula and Bonk Bonk, which is the healing song, and it's just, oh my God, it's crazy. But also, not just. Uh, uh, Pennebaker wasn't just like capturing, you know, it's, it's one thing to just capture the performance itself. The, another, another truth and honesty of his filmmaking was capturing the reaction to the, to the performances. One of, the, one of the best moments was when Janis Joplin was on stage and she's, if you've never heard Janis Joplin, holy crap, you really gotta listen to this one. You know, and she is just wailing her heart out in the way that Janis did. And she is just like, to the point that she's almost on the verge of tears. And then, then the film cuts to Mama Cass watching from the from the audience in rapturous reverence. Just wow! Just and yeah, yeah, you can't you can't help but feel like in awe with her. Like your like her reaction is your reaction. And and uh, the, oh man! And then you got like Eric Burden and the Animals doing this really sick cover of Painted Black. And that just sounds awesome with that violin they threw in there. But also, what, something else I loved about this was how it would be interspersed with these uh, peppers of of a uh, kind of the concert being uh, the lead up to and sort of the general feel of the concert around the time. Like there'd be like uh, some concert workers who would like be setting up setting up chairs. And there's a this great shot of a woman who like set up all of these chairs by herself, and then we get this lawn. Uh, pullback of her sitting in the middle of this em this like empty pavilion of of this pavilion of empty chairs, and she's just like she's just tired and she's she all right she she got the job done and she's sitting there and it just it feels relieving and you know, which like leads into the next scene which I think was Simon Garfunkel, but yeah it was beautiful beautiful oh <laughs> and then you get like these like even when you have like these you know, calming, peaceful uh, montages of people camping out on the grass, you know, when they're, they're talking, they're chatting it up, they're, you know, they're giving each other waters and waters and food and all that. They're just having a great time. Some of them are clearly, and you can tell people are clearly on psychedelics, like, uh, like a quarter of the people are on psychedelics the whole time. You could practically taste the mushrooms that people were consuming at this festival. But, oh, but you, on top of the, uh, on top of all of the like, when you, even when you have these like a uh, calming sequence, calming montages, it would be like sort of jarred with like with like the Who's performance, where, <laughs> where the guitar is just, just it just breaks down in complete chaos, and he just like he's like slamming, he's like slamming and breaking his guitar. And the drum, the drummer just like throws his kid to the side, and, like it's, like it's. Like some of the, like like some like a smoke grenade pa like passes his head behind him lands on the stage. It was crazy. Let's see, but then my God, Otis Redding. This man, wow, this man was a performer. Good God, God, this was this was one of those this was one of those performances I was absolutely crushed was as short as it was in the in the in, in the movie itself. But uh, the good but the good news is that both on the channel and on the physical release, 
they have outtakes. They we didn't need to show the full their their full set. It was you get so you get like the full twenty minutes of Otis writing just. Oh, absolutely crushing his scene, just like feeling the music, having the audience play, and feel the music with him. And, and but just when you think there isn't, there isn't a better performer in this world than Otis Redding, Jimi Hendrix. And if you have not heard Jimi Hendrix, like not really heard of Jimi Hendrix, like you know the name and you kind of get know his deal generally generally know his vibe and his sound through just the general cultural osmosis of being a, a, a famous name, a famous rock star from the 60s, you really need to watch this performance because he is just absolutely shredding and going nuts on his guitar. He's playing, he's doing this performance of Wild Thing that's just, in, well, wild. It's just, just watching him play and just like lose himself to the sound and just like kind of like pushing what pushing how a guitar can and should sound like like and then he just like he's like then he lights his guitar on fire it smashes it it's just no one else would do this just man it's it's really a you had to be there kind of moment and i'm glad that pennebaker and his crew were there to capture it and share it with us us but even that's not a highlight even otis even Jimi hendrix they're not one of the highlights my personal favorite highlight was the entire the entire like last i want to say last chunk of the movie where you have where you where it's not it's not again it's not jimmy it's not janice it's not otis that are that completely stole the stole the show it was ravi sankar who who even just briefly looking him up before filming this he was an absolute a devi damn virtuoso on the sitar Art. like this man did absolutely incredible work one of the possibly one of the greatest musicians to ever come out of india and oh my god this they captured like the entire performance and just showed it in this in the in, for the for like to close out this film and all the better for it like like uh, and like you watching and listening to this performance you're a lot like the people in the crowd where some are just some are just like watching in just enthralled silence some some like just they like lean back close their eyes and like like let his incredible music play and wash over him and one guy one guy just feels the music in his in his whole body just like standing up and just like like completely lost himself probably on acid too and man like watching watching ravi play his sitar and his you know and his drummer on his side it's it's hypnotic it's hip. It's absolutely hypnotizing, and just the rhythm of his playing uh, uh, coincided with the rhythm of the editing and the cuts. It's it's an an in, indescribable moment. It's the kind of thing where image and music are just so perfectly melded together, and then they and then they they go again. This lasts for like twenty five minutes of this of this entire performance, and I just wanted it to keep going, going. I just wanted to keep feeling that energy. And it's, man, man. And then he, and then he finishes, and the crowd goes nuts. They go absolutely ballistic. And then we close the movie, and man, like, I had, a, I wasn't, I wasn't sure I would like be so hyped about this, cause like, it's like, it's kind of for for me personally, it's kind of hard to like, when you make it a concert movie, it's kind of hard to beat, <laughs> to beat stop making sense. But hey, that's not the fault. That's not that's not the fault of Monterey Pop. Like it, like few few other movies are as good as Stop Making Sense, but. Monterey Pop is absolutely a joy, absolutely a vibe, absolutely something that you need to feel, need to listen and hear and really feel. And yeah, maybe it would also be even even made better if you took some if you took some psychedelics while listening to it because man, you can't you can't some few things beat the joy of watching and feeling a great uh, concert. And it's so good that we had documentary filmmakers who were able to capture a concert like that. And yeah, I highly recommend this. Highly, uh, can't, can't say a better word about it. And uh, if I also have to recommend another pen of baker, there was one I actually missed talking about. And it was his documentary on the original, on the recording of the original Broadway cast recording of Company. Fantastically 
Fantastic filmmaking there, fantastic songs, fantastic performances, great intimate moments, and similar, and again, similar to Monterey Pot too. It just kind of, kind of shares a lot of, a lot of uh, what, you, what there is to love about this. And there is so much to love. There's so much great joy, so much great music. Yeah, it's again, this is one of those, one of those movies you just you put on and you feel. Yeah, it's, it's a great vibe, and it's, it's marvelous. And I'm rambling. I'm like, it's, it's wonderful. Wonderful. Can't, can't recommend it enough. And I am Zach, and I love movies. I will have much more movies to watch. Hopefully new movies, not just these, uh, uh, one for the one for this challenge. And But uh, I'm getting through them, I promise. I'm, I'm trying to do them as, as fast and as, as, as eloquently as possible. And, uh, I'm, and uh, again, I'm Zach. I love movies. I hope you love movies too, and I hope you keep watching them. And I will see you all next time.